mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? That'd be me. <laughs> Hi everyone. So it's been a while since I last done a video in my bathroom because it's going to be another rehouse video. So I went to Tarantula Canada just uh, yesterday uh, because to uh, collect two uh, mature males that one of my friends has loaned me to breed with my females, uh, P. regalis uh, Indian Ornamental and Lastidora Parahibana, Sam Pink Bird Eater, which is going to be an ever interesting uh, mating project since these guys get up to like 2.5k uh, eggs. So it's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of babies. So um, also while I was there, I wanted to uh, get some uh, new tarantulas since I haven't really bought any in a couple of months. Uh, so luckily Tarantula Canada had imported some Ephornal Palmas here, which is a genus that is super, super hard to come by in Canada. Uh, they got a lot of variety ones uh, like uh, the Calcodes, uh, the Moderatum, uh, the Marecki, the Marxi, uh, the Gabelli, and so forth. So uh, the Moderatum was my dream tarantula. Unfortunately, it's a little bit out of my price range, uh, but I sold for something uh, equally as cool, which I think you'll be interested in seeing. Uh, also, uh, one of my friends has so sent me my very first tarantula colony. So I want to do this video just before I make the feeding video just to kind of show you how cool and how interesting it is to make a first colony video. So uh, let's get to it guys. So I'm going to set the camera down here and we're going to do a little tutorial on how to rehouse uh, tarantulas. Okay so let me put the tripod there. Hopefully you guys can see me. So uh, let's do one of the mature males. Okay, uh, this one comes from Chantal. Uh, she had loaned me her uh, Pocotheria regalis, the Indian ornamental tarantula. So uh, probably that's about four inches. So what I'm going to do is um, I already start to prepare uh, the guy's substrate. Well, the enclosure really. It's a one gallon jar with uh, eco of substrate, little cork bark on its side, and a water dish. So right now you can see I just gave some moisture to the substrate. I love soaking them, not uh, misting them because in my opinion, uh, misting the substrate isn't really good because it only wets up the top layers of the substrate and if you're in a very dry house like I am, uh, I mean, humidity will last you maybe a couple of hours at best. So I like to soak the substrate with warm water, uh, let it settle down, uh, let the bottom layers uh, trickle, well, the water trickle down the bottom layer, and that's about it. So, okay, so this is P. regalis. And of course, we should be prepared. Yeah, there we go, you can see. And this is her first breeding project ever. So it's pretty exciting that uh, she wants me to uh, be a part of it. Okay, so let's see how this male is. Ooh. Okay, oh, it's a nice size. It's about four and a half inches. Okay. A little bit skittish. And that's why we do them in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, whoop. Okay, he's over here. Uh, alrighty, come on, baby. Speedy Gonzalez, that's his name. 
Okay, Chantel, yeah, your mail is fine, however, he's giving me a lot of problems. Okay. Oh shit. Literally. Okay. Now this would be an interesting video. Imagine your parents waking up to that. Okay, now I gotta be careful here. Come on. Oh, come on, Jesus. Really? Oh boy. Okay, a little threat posture. Okay. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? Okay, guys, I need to get off this off camera. The beast is contained. Now, you can see that's a really active, mature male. Uh, he was really desperate to get out of there and do some exploring. Uh, you can tell it's a Pyragallus. If you look on uh, his abdomen, right over here, uh, it's a clear band which indicates it's Regalus. So, Regalus is the only one in the hobby, uh, next to Reger, which is not in the hobby, uh, that has the clear abdominal band. So, this is the next interesting part is trying to get him inside enclosure. Okay. Alrighty. Can you guys see what I'm doing? Yeah, you can. Okay. There we go. You can see that uh, P. regalis does not have tibial hooks on the first pair of legs, but all of them have the bulbous pedipalps in there. And there we go, there's a the clear abdomen band. Okay, good. He's in. Definitely was not easy. Was not easy to, to say the least. So that's that one. Okay, now this one here is another uh, mature male uh, that was loaned to me by uh, my friend Solomon. Um, this is a mature male, uh, last year during pair Hibana. Uh, which is the Salmon Pink Bird Eater. Now, he told me to really be careful about uh, this male. Uh, his rehousing, or trying to send it to me, did not go well, and he ended up getting bitten by the spider. So he provided me a, a critter keeper, I'm assuming, to uh, house it, so I'll probably likely be using it. Okay. Here's a mature male. Unfortunately, he did not put some substrate in there, which is uh, well, no, no. But anyway, these guys are going to come later. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some eco worth substrate. At this moment, is dry. Ok, 
Okay, I think that's enough substrate. And again, this is the watering technique I'd use. Pour water over the substrate. Okay, let's see if I have an extra water dish and a cave. I'll be back. All right, everyone, success. I found a cave. And a little water dish for this guy. All right, so let's give a little overview of his temporary enclosure. So, away we go with the mature male Lassiodora para hibana salmon pink bird eater. So this is probably, I would say, good. I would say about six inches. You can see uh, he's a mature male. Uh, let me bring this in for you. He's got his two little hooks on the first pair of legs, unlike the Pyragallus. And if you look at his feelers, which is the pedipalp, so his little two short legs right in front of the Chalurisere, those are what he uses to inject sperm into the female's sperm sac. Okay, so I have my friend Alex uh, to uh, help me record this because I don't know how this mature male will behave. If it bits Solomon, I'm up for a nice challenge, but I'm accepting it. Okay. So he told me that he has a little bit of a nerdicating hair problem. Uh, he thought well, that's normal for the species, and he's very bitey too. Nice chunky male. Yeah, he ain't so bad. Perfect. There we go. Mature male, Lassiodora para hibana, sand pink bird eater. Whew! That was certainly a challenge. It's pretty hot in here. Uh, now our gallus, whoa! That's going to be interesting to uh, mate. Uh, so thanks, Chantal, uh, for uh, loaning me this mature male. I have to feed both of my females well, and I think I'll pair uh, him up with Pandora since uh, Zelda uh, killed the last male. And uh, Sully, or Solomon, uh, for loaning me uh, his mature male, uh, Lassiter para Hibana. Okay, so now, um, the new Ophonopalmas uh, that I received. So I bought two of them. Uh, one of them is the uh, Phonopalma Calcodes Desert Blonde and the new one uh, which is called a Phonopalma Gabelli. Now a Phonopalma Gabelli, uh, for me, I haven't really heard about this species, uh, but from what I've been told, uh, this is from uh, El Paso County in Texas and supposedly it's the most common species found in the Cho. Chihuahuan Desert. So let's have a look at the Ophonopalma gabelli. Oh, but first, I'm going to ask Siri a nice question. Siri, please open flashlight. Gotta love your iPhones. <laughs> so here is the Ophonopalma gabelli. Unfortunately, there's no common name associated with this one. Paid about $150 for about a three inch unsexed specimen. And this one happens to be wild caught. So no idea if it's a male or female. I could always check. In fact, let's do that. Okay guys, unfortunately, um, I ventral sexed it. It's um, likely a possible male. So, hmm, I'll definitely need a molt, do double and triple check on that one. 
And here is my Fono Palma Calcodes uh, Desert Blonde. A really nice specimen from Arizona. All right, let's check this one out. Again, what I'm doing is not really 100% confirmed. Uh, ventral sexing is not totally reliable and that's just a little second guess. So I'm gonna look to my camera. Whoops. This one may be a possible female. But again, again, um, I'm about like 75% sure until I see a molt, uh, I will definitely confirm that. That's a nice species, definitely. Fonal palmas are really rare and, and this one too is a wild caught specimen. Definitely very young. Okay guys, now the piece de resistance. So a lot of you have asked me to, you know, start a, a tarantula colony. And for me, it's, it's very hard to maintain a colony with all the work that I do, uh, not, you know, besides posting YouTube videos, but m mainly uh, my summer job, which is uh, mow lawns. And then sometimes I substitute teach. Currently, I do not have a posting yet at this time. However, uh, Rose, uh, who was responsible for uh, donating me uh, Kate, which is uh, the lovely female A Versicolor, no, C Versicolor, uh, who's thriving absolutely well and she's gorgeous, recently molted. Um, you've seen her in so many feeding videos. So what she sent me guys is a colony of Hysterocrates gigas. This is the Cameroon Red Baboon. Now she told me guys, uh, if you want to start a colony, uh, get one that is known to be very communal. Um, for example, you should go for Neoholotheli Inci, which is the Trinidad olive, uh, either uh, gold form or the regular form. Uh, Heterolotheli species from Africa, like the Gabonensis and the Vilocella, or Hysterocrates uh, gigas. Now, if you are going to start a colony, make sure you have enough feeding items. And however, this is the most important part in setting up a colony. If you're setting up one, make sure that these are the slings from the same sack and have been raised together. Don't buy like, for example, one from Kelly Swift and then, and then you get one from another source and then you try to pair them together. That's not going to work. So. They have to be brother and sister from the same sack and have been raised um, and never separated. So what she sent me is, I think 11 or 12 of H gigas uh, spiralings are currently about like half inch to three quarter inch. So guys, I wanna have a look at this. This is pretty cool. And I'm a very big fan of The Walking Dead. So thumbs up if you like the name, The Saviors as my uh, new colony. So uh, she actually has one uh, so far, three years, no fights. And I think she has about eight females and two males and they're really, really doing well. So I don't know how many you're gonna see in here. So let's have a look. And they're all hiding, of course. Oh, there they are. Look at them. <laughs> They're so cute. I count one. Yeah, I think there's about 12 of them in there. Wow, so cool. Yeah, Hysterocrates gigas, Cameroon red baboon colony. So this will be a very cool uh, documentary to see them grow. 
And actually, I'm going to be feeding these guys every week uh, instead of like a month because I really don't want to uh, my colony to be cannibalized by um, for me not feeding them enough. So uh, she fed them well on Sunday. Uh, on Sunday, I will uh, buy some little pinheads and we'll feed them about two dozen crickets in there and we'll see how they do. So guys, so thank you so much Rose for uh, providing uh, a History of Karate's Gigas colony, uh, Cameron Red Baboon. Uh, check her out. I don't know if she's on uh, YouTube, but she's a pleasure to deal with. Thank you so much Rose. Uh, for Tarantula Canada, thank you so much for uh, selling me a uh, non-sex specimen of the Fono Palma Calcodes Desert Blonde and the Fono Palma Gabelli, which I have no idea what the common name of this one is yet. Uh, thanks to Chantel for giving me a really much needed experience on video. <laughs> Trying to chase this guy all the way down and then he came down the border and then I caught him on the floor. P. regalis, mature male, and a questionable temperament of uh, Solomon's uh, mature male last year or power hibana. So guys, I want to thank you so much for watching my video. Please subscribe, rate, and comment. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that way every time you have a video that I post up, you'll be notified almost immediately. So guys, thanks for watching. I will be, I'm in the process of recording Feeding Video Part 1. Hopefully it should be out by, I want to say, uh, Saturday and then Sunday I'll be uh, featuring the colony uh, getting some crickets for that and I should be everything should be up by uh, Tuesday so I thanks so much for watching uh, you've been a great uh, asset to me and my will to make videos and just want to say guys thank you so much all right guys you take care have a nice day or evening if you're nighttime like I am <laughs> All right, guys, see you later.